They got their shit in order. They good. Not saying that they don't, but you living a lie. Now, the thing about this guy right here is a while back, his friend put on her page uh, something to the effect of, just to sum it up, oh, here's my friend, such and such. I'm not going to say his name. Here's my friend, such and such. But he was escorting men around. You know what I'm saying? He was an escort for men and caught HIV AIDS, you know, and he just wanted to come out and just tell the world, you know what I mean? He was tired of living with it and trying to hide it and all that. Yes, this young man right here. Flash forward. Fast forward. Excuse me. Fast forward to now. Eight some odd years later. Six to eight some odd years later. Now, he's looking like this. First of all, you can't go from this type of person being gay because that's what you are. If you have sex with men for money, you gay. You know what I'm saying? You caught HIV from a man, from having sex with men, escort men, and had AIDS. Now today, you're a gangster. Today, you're a real nigga. Today, you know what I'm saying? Like, like whatever happened five years ago, like that don't even matter. But how the, how the, how have we come to a time right now in life to where five years ago a man could do something? You feel what I'm saying? And y'all look back and say, "Oh, that ain't never happened." You know what I'm saying? That's like that's like six nine. Ain't nobody gonna say six nine not a rat. Six nine read it damn near. You feel what I'm saying? Damn near eight nine years ago. If not less, you know, I'm just spitting a number, but nobody going to say that he not no rat because time had them passed. Or he not a rat no more because time had them passed. My man, if you gay, you gay. I don't have no problem with gay people. No, no, I do have a problem with closet gay people. I don't have no problem with openly gay people. See, that's how females catching AIDS and all this and that. Because y'all walking around and y'all portraying this fraud like y'all regular real niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? You was just not fucking punks. You was just not going in the man backside. Or if not, the reversal. You see what I'm saying? Back and forth, flip-flopping. That's what they call it in jail, flip-flopping. You were flip-flopping. You see what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, you on pictures talking about if you see your best man, you're going to miss you lose your best hitter. Come on, man. You can't be... A fag or a gay nigga or like booted from a man for money 10 years ago and now that ain't never happened. You straight. You you a straight nigga. You cool. You straight. You ain't like that ain't never happened. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. What have we come to? What have we succumbed to? To where our attention span is just that short? You feel me? To where our attention span say, well, uh, he ain't doing it now, so that don't matter. He caught HIV from it. It got to matter. He still got HIV. You didn't get rid of the HIV. You feel what I'm saying? So it all comes to the fact that the matter of, man, stop running around here acting like you this, acting like you that, when we all know you're not. You feel what I'm saying? I know you're not. Your family know you're not. People around you know you're not. But they turn a deaf, a, a, a deaf ear to it and a blind eye to it. They turn their head like it ain't never happened. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people like that. They they just like if they if if you got a little something going for yourself and you got a little clout and a little money, they'll overlook anything. You feel what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, what the what the fuck is wrong with y'all? You see what I'm saying? Like, how could you overlook that this nigga got HIV AIDS from a fucking fag was out your fucking niggas and this and that and and now it's like it never happened. Y'all look at. It never happened. Man, females, beware of this nigga. You feel me? Beware of this nigga, man. Because this the type of nigga right here that had y'all out here sick because y'all thinking y'all fucking with a real man. And eight years ago, he was fucking them boys. He was fucking men. That's the God's honest truth. He was fucking men. Let me make sure I don't get that bottle in there because they're not, they not paying me for advertising. Whoever, whoever, make this, whoever make this red, they ain't paying me for advertising. So they can't get in there. You feel me? Let me go ahead on and stand in front of them. But yeah, like I said, come on, man.
What type of world are we living in? What type of world are we living in to where we turn a blind eye to something just because somebody got a little money or they got a little clout? You feel what I'm saying? And nigga ain't got no money, money like that. The motherfucker's still working. If you still working for somebody else, you ain't really got no money like that. You see what I'm saying? You ain't no multi-millionaire. Man. You ain't a self-made man. You see what I'm saying? Nigga ain't no self-made man. I don't take nothing away from the nigga. You see what I'm saying? The nigga got a little bread. Nigga got him a good job. But at the end of the day, nigga, you still walking around here with HIV AIDS acting like you a regular motherfucking nigga. You ain't no regular nigga. You see what I'm saying? You a sick person. You sick, my nigga. You see what I'm saying? If you live there and fuck somebody and you get that shit to them, you see what I'm saying? You gonna fuck around and go to jail for that shit if they die from it, nigga, off they, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't tell them, that's how serious it is. You see what I'm saying? But you walk around like it ain't nothing. You see what I'm saying? Motherfuckers act like that shit ain't nothing. Man, you get you get somebody, people sick, and a nigga come kill you. Come on, man, you know why, you know why a nigga won't do you something, this and that, you cause you got their people sick. That's just a fact of how serious it is. That you damn near have to register. You feel what I'm saying? As a motherfucker having HIV AIDS. That's like a fucking database, like a registry, nigga. You see what I'm saying? Before you fuck somebody, you got to tell them. Nigga, that's just like if you got a motherfucking a, a, a child molester move in your motherfucking neighborhood. Before, you know what I'm saying? When they move in that bitch, they going to let you know. They got to let you know. You heard me? They going to let you know. You see what I'm saying? And if the motherfucker don't let you know, they could go to jail for not registering. Or this nigga could go to jail. From you catching it, and that's damn near like an attempted murder, you know what I'm saying, type charge type shit. You see what I'm saying? I don't know the exact charge, so, you know what I'm saying, correct me if I'm wrong, comment down below if you know the charge, but, man, come on, man. Come on, man, what y'all think about that? What y'all think about these down low men, you see what I'm saying, these down low attractive men, I'm not gay, you see what I'm saying, but a lot of women might find them attractive, you see what I'm saying? If, if a bitch can find me attractive... You see what I'm saying? Look at how I look. Bitch, I, I clean up now. I clean up now. Don't make me do the don't make me do the TikTok or I do the TikTok on you nigga. You know what I mean? Picture me. I, I do the TikTok on you, bitch, but you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day though, bro, like it's a serious fucking problem. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of our black females looking at every man as he suspect. You see what I'm saying? Every man is suspect. Because of niggas like this. You feel what I'm saying? This shit is just this shit is just Cruel and unusual punishment, man. For you to walk around here and act like you a real ass nigga. Just, you know what I'm saying? Fucking living a fraud, bro. Like, you not regular, bro. You not regular. You know what I'm saying? You damn near like an alien. You see what I'm saying? Everything you do, as far as sexuality wise, you gotta tell somebody. You see what I'm saying? Man, don't believe the motherfucking hype. You see what I'm saying? Push that motherfucking button, man. Like and subscribe, man. Comment down below, man. What y'all think about these guys? That's going around and putting these motherfucking females in danger. You see what I'm saying? By not, by not, you know what I'm saying? Staying in their lane and confessing. Man, yeah, man, I was fucked up out here. You see what I'm saying? I ain't had no money or nothing, you know what I'm saying? So I was sleeping with men for money and I wound up contracting HIV AIDS. You see what I'm saying? Like, share, subscribe, man. Comment down below, man. Let's keep this shit pumping, man. Run it up. Mother never loved me, motherfuck another mother Headshots while she slumber Grab the purple pillow just to block the muffle Barrel smoking, looking like a muffler Grab the cover, smother all the youngsters the devil there are also differences between black gay men and black bisexual men. I'm going to show a couple of slides here that have MSMW, that means men who have sex with men and women. And these are data that were published by Daryl Wheeler a couple of years ago. Um, really important study which found that for black bisexual men, that most of them identify as bisexual. For black gay men, most of them identify as gay. When we take a look at HIV testing, we have high numbers of HIV testing for both black bisexual men as well as black gay men, about 84% and 92%. But black gay men are still more likely to test compared to black bisexual men. In terms of HIV testing, though, and, and the results of the HIV test, you find that black bisexual men are more likely to test HIV negative compared to black gay men. And this is something that you see in study after study, that men who are bisexually active are less likely to test positive for HIV compared with men who are gay. And in terms of some of the risk behaviors, the number one risk behavior for contracting HIV, which is unprotected anal uh, receptive sex, you find that black gay men are more likely to engage in that activity compared to black bisexual men. 
So the reason that I'm showing this slide is because there's been an awful lot of dialogue about the down low over the last four to five years and the degree to which they might be associated with HIV infections in the black community. But what you can see from these data as well as data from many other studies is that black bisexual men do not engage in greater rates of risk behavior compared to black gay men. And they're also less likely to be HIV positive. It's still there. It's still out there, and if you have unprotected sex with anybody, you could get it. New at 11 fear tonight there could be more victims after Green Acres police officers arrested, charged with spreading HIV to sexual partners who didn't know he carries a virus. New Channel 5's Megan McRoberts tells us doctors say they need to be tested immediately. Megan. Yeah, and Tanya, it's very possible that those possible victims could be just learning now that Irvin St. Clair has HIV and that they could have been exposed to it. But doctors say so long as they take action now and get tested, their chances of having better treatments are increased. It's a health scare that doctors know isn't going away anytime soon. Tonight as we speak, some, some HIV infections will be transmitted. Unprotected sex still being the blame for spreading HIV. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office looking into whether or not Greenacres police officer Irvin St. Clair is also contributing to the spread of the virus. It's still there. It's still out there. And if you have unprotected sex with anybody, you could get it. Dr. David Dodson saying Palm Beach County accounts for 10% of the state's HIV cases. But he says there is some good news for anyone who worries they may have had sexual contact with an infected person. If you've had sex with somebody who has HIV, actually the odds are you won't. You won't get it, but it is possible. Dodson saying they just need to be tested. Treatments are becoming highly advanced if the virus does transmit. Well, we know that we can pe keep people alive and give them virtually a normal lifespan by controlling the HIV uh, infection. Dodson knows the stigma around the virus keeps them quiet about having it and may have kept St. Clair quiet. So if, if you're trying to have sex with someone and you tell them you're HIV, you might not uh, be successful. But hopes this news will be a reminder that anyone having unprotected sex is at risk. Now, symptoms of HIV can take upwards of 10 years to show up. Now, Dotson says the CDC has come out with the call for universal testing that would be more widespread testing that would be routine at your doctor's visits. We're live in Palm Beach County. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. Oh, that's the sweet, sweet sense, you know. Yeah, I... There he go. There he go. There he go. There he go. Hey, everyone. Today is October the... 5th, 2014. So as you can see, my face is not very happy today. Um, if you're new to my channel, hi, please like and subscribe. I'm sorry for the upset face. Hit the little bell down there, guys. So let's talk. How do you walk around here with HIV, herpes, and syphilis? And then have a nerve to want to sleep with me unprotected? What is wrong with you people? What's wrong? Y'all don't care about yourselves? Really? This is 2019, almost 2020, and y'all have not given a fuck about yourselves and since I can remember. How do you literally walk around with HIV, syphilis, and herpes? knowingly and still be out here sleeping with other people unprotected even protected really oh my god this is ridiculous y'all so I went on my husband's HAF portal which is AIDS Health Foundation I got his last test results. Mind you, being married to this man, I should have gotten some of these results myself, let alone, you know, they should have called me and said, hey, we might need you to come down here to get tested because he came back positive for this shit. But yet, no. On his paperwork, it says single. 
So because of that, they don't have to notify anybody. I am so pissed right now. Mind you, we go to the same doctor. We have the same last name. We go to the doctor all the time together. So for them to write him up as single, it just pisses me off. It just lets me know, one, he's the one who put it, single. I refuse to be a victim. You're not going to walk around here with HIV, herpes, and syphilis and be giving it to people let her know me i am so pissed right now he better be glad i can't talk to him contact him or nothing at this moment because it doesn't make any sense for somebody to really want to hurt somebody but yet you love me ain't even checked your status thank god you're considered undetectable right now one less thing to worry about I'm over it, guys. I am so over the bullshit. Come on. Care about yourself, man. And I'm looking at the medications, and I'm like, I, I. he's got oral thrush right now. This opportunistic diseases and crazy shit, which means you're going into the stage of AIDS. AIDS, man. You don't care. I don't care. Don't care about me. Care about the family we've built. Who, my, the children who love you. You just don't care. Now life is precious. It's important. We only got one. So why not care about yourself? Care about your health. Really? I am so, so pissed right now, guys. It doesn't make any kind of sense. I want to cry because it's like I'm the only one who cares. Only one. And you have a nerve to come to me saying you want your family back and how much you love me and this, that, and a third. But I, didn't, I don't have anything right now. So for me to believe you've been faithful, it's like something to none. Doing the right thing ain't hard, guys. It don't cost you a thing. Nothing. Just do the right thing. Be fucking normal. I just, I'm so upset right now because it doesn't make any sense for somebody to literally go around and hurt other people and think that shit's okay. I'm done ranting for today, at least to you all. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. Today is October the 5th, 2019. Please like and subscribe. Share with friends, family. Bye, guys. Days before an unprecedented trial in the tri-state, you're about to hear the exclusive story behind the alleged crimes. The case involves a former professional wrestler charged with not telling his many sex partners that he is HIV positive. One woman who knows the circumstances all too well is now telling her story only to the I-team's Hagit Lamour. Alex Uline can't afford to break down. He wants some too? There's too much at stake. Ooh, good boy. Like teaching two-year-old Maya the ABC song. TV. Or trying to keep up with one-year-old AJ. Hey. There are two children with Andre Davis, a man who looked far different as a wrestler who called himself Andre Hart. He stole her heart when she was just 20. Within a year, he got an offer from the WWE, an offer then withdrawn because his physical showed Davis was HIV positive. And he told me right away, and at that time I was pregnant, you know, it was just very, very shocking and just, you know, you don't know what to think at that time. Very hard. But the worst was yet to come. 
Court records spell out the sad details. Twelve women who claim after his diagnosis, Davis had sex with them, but never told his HIV status. SL, KC, SG, MS, a veritable alphabet soup of women now fearing they're infected too. I was shocked. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know what to believe. It's a magnitude prosecutors say is unparalleled in this region. They charged Davis with 15 counts of felonious assault. When he goes on trial this week, he's looking at up to 120 years in prison if convicted. What has he said about these charges? I mean, he, he's, you know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't deny them. I mean, he's not saying that, you know, this is, he, that he didn't. I feel like he knows what he was doing now, and he knows that it was wrong, and he's very, very sorry. I know that. I know that for a fact, but it doesn't change that, you know, what he did. You can feel the conflict rolling off this young mom, still making excuses for her children's father. And it's not like somebody was trying, okay, well, I'm going to go out here and try to give this to these people. It's not like it was... But he didn't tell them, and he, he was HIV exactly. positive. Exactly, and that's, that's wrong in itself right there, but I, I think definitely he should pay for what he did. But Alex says he's not the only one paying. <laughs> she says her kids are, too. They have been discriminated against at their daycare. Maya and AJ attended the Blue Ash Educational Building. Alex says she told the assistant director here about their father's arrest and status confidentially she thought and I said well the kids are okay I just want to let you know they're fine they don't have anything to do with this they are completely fine a few months ago she says that same manager started pressuring her to prove the kids aren't infected Alex says they're not but regardless the Americans with Disabilities Act says daycare providers don't have the right to require a child's HIV status she says the note from their pediatrician clearing them for daycare should suffice. Exactly, nothing. They don't even have anything, let alone, you know, the fact that they want to, uh, you know, break my kids' privacy laws. That's the part chafing Alex. After she rebuffed the assistant director, she says she got a call from the owner with more pressure to provide private medical records. And he said that, you know, somebody had informed the parents and the teachers about this. Hi, is Mary Lynn here? We tried to talk to that assistant director. She's actually involved in the program. She wouldn't come to the door or answer our calls. We did get this letter from attorney R.L. Kent Boussier. He cited privacy protections to prevent any discussion of enrollment questions, but asked us to fax him any other questions. We did. He never responded. <laughs> It's all been too much for Alex. She pulled the kids out of the daycare, away from the only center they'd attended and the workers they'd known. He, they're getting punished for something that they didn't do, something that their father made a bad decision to do. They didn't do anything, and they're just getting caught in the crossfire. That was Hagit Lamore reporting. Alex is testifying for the prosecution, but she's not one of the 12 women named in the charges. Nine News will cover the trial. It begins tomorrow. You're watching an RH Reality Check production brought to you by rhrealitycheck.org. I'm HIV positive. I've been positive since 2006. Um, I was incarcerated in South Carolina. I've been released of uh, June 1st, uh, 2009, and just dealing with it on a daily basis. Were you aware of HIV AIDS before, while you know this was was going on? Well, yeah, I was aware of it, but I I wasn't as uh, knowledgeable on it now, uh, like I am now. Let me ask you the obvious question. Why wasn't a condom used? They don't pass them out. When I became incarcerated, it was just not an option. It was not an option. The only option was to be abstinent. And um, and I didn't want to be abstinent. I, I had a lover and I had uh, a good, he was a good friend to me and he was also someone I was sexually attracted to. Like, you know, um, 
and and it just came natural it came natural and uh just like with anything else in life you know if if you're outside of the walls and you're out in the street in society you're not you know you're not always going to have a rubber handy and uh but it, at least you have the choice to get one but in there you don't have you don't have that choice i was diagnosed in 1989 of december um come from being i started out real early um, on the streets, living on the streets, basically, um, you know, having sex for money, you know, getting high. That was my main riff, getting high, doing this and doing anything with you, him, and everybody else for a few dollars to get high. And um, basically, um, my life started changing. You know, I got real sick, um, wasn't taking no medicine because I didn't want nobody to know what was going on with me. Um, my older brother, he um, he died of AIDS. Um, right now, um, I have AIDS, and I has progressed to AIDS like 10 years ago. Um, the medicine that I'm on, um, it's not working, but they want me to continue to take it. You know, my CD4 count is 1.7. My viral load is over a million, but it's like the grace of God. You know, I'm I still move around, I work, and it's it's a challenge every day for me. I feel pain every day, but I just, you know, I keep going. And um, basically, just like I said, um, it's, it comes from, you know, having sex with men. You, I, I, did, I, was, I was too young back then, I didn't, and even when I found out, I was real young, so I was still ripping and running the streets, and you know what I'm saying, and unprotected sex because, you know, it Condoms, yeah, right. Nobody uses was using condoms back then, really. And then when you out there tricking one two o'clock in the morning, prostituting your body, you ain't got time to get a condom. You're trying to get in the car and get out. And I wasn't using this up here. I was just thinking about the next high. The medicines are not working, you know. But I, I continue to take them anyway. I take 19 pills a day. It's like a volcano on the inside of me, and I'm saying, when is it going to erupt? And from the time I walked out of the doctor's office until I got to my front door, I cried, you know. So I was, put my key in the door, and it seemed like I couldn't get the door open. My father came to the door, and my father said, what's wrong? Like that. So I said, I said, Dad, I said, I got HIV. Like that. So he told me, he said, look, son, he said, HIV ain't the worst thing in the world. He says, um, cheer up. He said, it, it's not as bad as you think it is. He said, you're going to live a long time. But the doctor told me that in six months, I would be dead. This was in 1982. I, I don't know how I managed to. The only thing I can say is just the grace of God that I'm just still here. Right here in South Carolina, I've still experienced... Um, a little bit of ignorance down here to to the point where uh, I'm ashamed, you know, sometimes to, to sit there and engage myself in long conversations about it with people because I'm not so sure they're catching what I'm saying. Uh, but I still speak on it. I still I, I still try to get out there and help them get an understanding and uh, and deal with it like I do, you know. Uh, because uh, I, I, I've even had family members from up here, you know, as, as much as they love me, as much as I love them, some of them are still, you know, reluctant to get into the knowledge on it. The thing is that, you know, they'll turn around and do things that are strange to me, like, uh, like they'll set out the table in China where for everyone in the family for a big gathering or a dinner and just in my place would be the paper plates and the plastic cups mm. and the plastic spoons, you know. And I mean, that's enough to make somebody want to just get up from the table and leave and don't even speak on it. So I had to find a way to talk about it with them and with my friends and, and loved ones, you know, and, and just people that aren't, aren't used to talking to people about it that have it. Um, and I find that what South Carolina needs is uh, to let go of a little bit of that tradition when it comes to this because this is something that can affect the whole community if they don't wisen up this is going to be part of history you know and they need to they need to make the changes that are necessary to uh, become less ignorant i guess it's a lot of grown 
grown men peer pressure you know we have peer pressure as well and we don't want our friends to know that we have it or that we interested in trying to learn about it so we can help the next person so we as african-american men the majority of us we run away from it yeah that's what we do i'm inclined to agree with uh anthony because see i've noticed that the african community african-american community here in columbia tends to try to run away from the getting tested and uh um they'll talk about it when they're talking about someone else having it like as though like you know picking and making fun of people or joking around about it whatever but as far as being serious about it and getting tested um uh, it's not too many not too many people willing to get out there and get tested and i'm one of them who used to be like that i didn't want to get tested but the thing is that uh when it comes to having sex and being and getting not getting tested and everything that plays a part up here too because they're so scared to even let someone know that they're not so uh masculine with their sexuality that um they really don't want no one to know that they've got hiv because they everyone thinks that that's you know the gay disease which um which is not just the gay disease or gay man's disease at one time they were saying that um aids was a white man's um disease white men was getting the disease mostly and now they're saying that um, black men are the predominant leaders of the hiv uh, disease like um i think that that black men ought to fess up to to what they're doing now black men will go out sleep with a woman turn around and then sleep with an a man, you understand what I mean? Then go home to their wives. You know, that's that's not right. You understand what I mean? That's I believe that's why the disease is spreading as fast as it is. And see, we as Afro American men, we have this syndrome called black man's pride. Yeah. We don't we we hide behind that refrigerator right there and we let other people do the work for us, then we start complaining. The drug situation today, it has our minds locked up. And as long as that's out there and it has control of us, then we'll always be stagnated right here. I mean, I, I've come across several people who were like myself, who that's the reason why I got high, was to have sex and to not care and not have to worry about, you know, I'm not worrying about what's happening tomorrow, or what's going on when this person leaves. All I know is I want to get a motel, get some cocaine, get two, three people in there and we just have a sex party. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And it's, that's gonna continue as long as drugs are affecting people's mind like that. And they're, they're always gonna be that way. And it's just getting, it's getting worse, especially out here. This is a large part of the community out here. It just likes, they just like the cocaine and the party mentality and and they're in that mindset and you don't see them running out there and buying a rock and making sure at the same time they buy a condom. They're not going to do that. They're just going to buy one or the other. You know? I like to see people doing things like running raffles and bingo halls and everything with nothing but financial support coming out of that to HIV uh, sponsoring and stuff. And, and maybe some counseling and uh, more free testing. I like to see buses going around instead of saying donate blood, saying, you know, get tested right here in the bus. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Why can't they do that? So I think a lot of young black Afro-American men need to be educated on this. I really do. And for real, I think they should implement that, a study of this in a part of high schools now. I really do think they should have yeah. a HIV and AIDS mandatory class, course. a mandatory course yeah. on that because this thing has, it has really spread. I mean, it, it is not just right here, it's worldwide. Now, when it comes to medical, you know, this state is great because they've got, everything's on the Ryan White for HIV. Everybody can get their medication here. Um, they can get some counseling here. They can get some psychiatric care here if you're HIV. Um, you know, these things are very necessary for somebody. And I don't want to get the wrong message across that, like, there's just, you know, so many problems for the person with HIV. There's so many things also that are helpful for someone here um, with HIV. There's a lot that is being done. Um, I don't have nothing but complaints. I don't have, I'm not just full of complaints. I do have some, but I have some 
awesome things and people to be grateful for in this state too. HIV time bomb many people may not even know is ticking. That's the message tonight from local health experts after they say one prostitute reveals an alarming story. This is a story we, they hope will make everyone take notice about an ongoing community health risk. News Channel 5's Rochelle Ritchie explains. This is 36-year-old Michelle Wiseman. She admits to being a prostitute according to this legal affidavit and admits to having sex with multiple men even when she knew she was HIV positive. She reportedly never told her partners. Her recent arrest on prostitution charges focuses fresh attention on the spread of HIV and AIDS in Palm Beach County. It does still remain high. We remain among the top four in the state of Florida. Serena Page Becton works at the Northeast Palm Beach County Health Center. They regularly treat prostitutes with HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. This latest case speaks to the need for heightened awareness. Keep them so we're constantly canvassing the areas where we know that there's known um, activity of that sort. The arrest affidavit says Wiseman got caught in a Lake Worth prostitution sting. She was spotted standing at the corner of 12th and Dixie Highway. An undercover officer approached. She allegedly agreed to have sex and was arrested. At the sheriff's office, investigators say she admitted to being a prostitute for three years and to testing positive for HIV, though it's not clear when. Becton says safe sex is often a hard sell for the prostitutes they counsel. And when people come in, we do what's called a history, a sexual history on that person, and oftentimes they are disclosing their number of partners. So if I had to give an average that would be at about five per day. Five partners a day, 35 a week, more than 1,800 a year if the numbers are accurate. There is a law that does state that they must inform anyone before they engage in sexual activity of their HIV status. A law too often ignored, health experts say, making the spread of HIV a risk that won't go away. That's the health warning experts hope people will listen to. Weissman right now is in jail on a $3,000 bond. She faces a felony charge for knowingly having HIV and not telling her sexual partners. I'm Rochelle Ritchie, WPTV News Channel 5. What do you think when people associate HIV with just gay men? It's, it's not a gay issue. I'm not gay. I have HIV. I've been positive almost 14 years. And I've never slept with another woman, so HIV is not a gay issue <laughs> anymore. That's an important distinction Jackie Wilson is making. As a resident of Jackson, Mississippi, HIV is not a gay issue, but a human one. And without the right resources, it's a virus that can be as complex as life itself. I found out that I was HIV positive in prison. Okay. I've been in prison for two weeks when I found out, and that's when my journey began. Do you know how you contracted it? Mm-hmm. Do you mind sharing that? No, I was dating a guy and we had dated for many, many years. And he found out that he was positive three years prior to me finding out, but he never shared that information with me. So what was, take us, take us back to 06. Mm -hmm. um, what goes through your head when you find out? Oh my God, it was like a black tunnel because all I heard was you tested positive for HIV. And it's like everything just went, I couldn't hear, and I couldn't see farther than right there because it all just went black. I didn't know about HIV. So I took it upon myself to start educating myself on the do's and the don'ts, the ins and outs, the facts and the myths of being HIV positive and being a woman. HIV disproportionately affects people who look like Jackie. According to the CDC, black women account for 69% of all HIV diagnoses among women in the South. One reason rural communities have especially limited access to health care services. It's partly why Jackie picked up her stuff and moved to Jackson, where she went from patient to employee at Open Arms Healthcare Center. It's a clinic designed to address the alarming rates of new HIV infections in the Deep South. The health care for the rural areas is poor. It's very poor, and more of it is needed. More people need to need needs to be treated in the rural area and not allowing them to have health care. That's the biggest factor in people dying mm -hmm. because they can't afford to. To take care of themselves. So 
black women, of course, are disproportionately mm -hmm. affected by this. 69% of all HIV cases among women are, are with women in the South. What goes through your head when you hear that, when you know you're kind of a part of that statistic? It's, it's, first, it's devastation. Mm -hmm. And then it's the, the desire to change it. Somebody has to have the desire to say, my sister, we can do this. You can beat this. And if you don't have it, then we can help you not get it. Did you have that? Did you have anyone in your corner or was no. that you? No, it was me. Do you, think, do you think that's the case for a lot of women? Yeah. And if they don't speak out about it, how will we know? So what you desire from more, more from other women is what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. how, what's going through your head? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me why. Why are you excited? <laughs> because I feel like a change is coming for women mm -hmm. of all nationalities that are HIV positive. We are some, we need a voice. Mm -hmm. I want to be the voice of HIV positive women because I love people for who they are. No matter if you're HIV, hepatitis C, it don't make no difference because my eyes don't see disease. My eyes see a human, mm -hmm. somebody who needs to be loved and hugged and, you know, tell you, you are so beautiful. And you are. Nah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's just, that's just my desire. I think when people contract something like HIV, they think their love life is over. Right. Did you ever think that? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, it took me. <laughs> It took me 11 years to get the man I got. <laughs> What's the scene? So, what, 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 yeah. Okay, so by the giggles, it seems the love life is good now. What? <laughs> the the laughs are enough. What, but you have so much hope, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you, you, I mean, I can feel your spirit. It's amazing. Um, that's not always the case when you when you get diagnosed it's with not, HIV. No. What do you tell that person who's not there, who who isn't laughing, who doesn't have hope that their love life is reinstated, and who doesn't have the hope that their family's gonna stick around? You know. Well, my word to them would be, don't give up, because even if you don't believe in God, whoever you claim to be your higher power, if they love you and know your heart, it's gonna be your heart's desire. It's it's gonna come if you can survive just finding out that you're HIV positive, then you can survive being HIV positive. My journey starts on the 10th of April, 2006. I decided to take a walk home from where I worked at the clinic in Pretoria Lodium. It was midday. I decided to walk that day and not wait for the driver or for my husband. We lived in a very dangerous area, a very beautiful area but dangerous. Crime was rife, hijackings, muggings were rife. Um, this day I decided to go home early to surprise my kids and surprise my husband when he comes home everything would be ready. As I was walking, I was very vigilant and observant of my surroundings. Sadly, me being vigilant and observant was not okay. Um, a man approached me and pulled my handbag. As he pulled my handbag, I pulled back. I turned to see him. We battled, we struggled. Every time he slapped me, I hit him back. At the time I was doing Taibo and kickboxing and every time he knocked me down I would get up and kick him down. We fought for the longest time. I bled from head to toe. Eventually he picked me up and I had a suit on and he ripped my blouse open and started biting me from my neck downwards. Carried me across the road into the bush and raped me. What I can say, it took, I, after my rape, my life took a whole new turn. I no longer felt the same woman. I refused to go to work. I was in depression. January the 2nd, I was diagnosed HIV positive from my rapist. My marriage fell apart. My world fell apart. My home fell apart. My life fell apart. 
I tried to commit suicide five times. I've been to numerous mental health clinics in Pretoria, Denmark Clinic, Vista Clinic. I would go every three months into this clinic on sleep therapy for 21 days, heavily sedated. I was a total mess. I did not know who I am, what I wanted, what, what was the next step. To me, all I felt